YouTube Nation, Mayfit TV, aka Me TV, aka there's a new challenger in the arena today, and they want to take on a champ. But before we get started today, I want to say thank you guys for watching the show. Thank you for sending all the information. You know what? We're just gonna get into it right now. All right, let's just start off what NBC had to say about gamers not too long ago. Check this out. Okay, let's be honest. Men can be mysterious sometimes. They do think differently. They act differently. And God knows they behave a lot differently than we do. So to help us understand them a little better, we've called on our pal, Donnie, Donnie Deutschman, Deutschman, la 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 la. To give us... <laughs> what? Hold on. This is my competition. This is my competition. Hold on, guys. Hold on, hold on. You have to be kidding me, right? You know what? I'll take it serious for a minute, all right? Let's break it down for what it is, all right? They want to cause a divide between women and men, all right? Without any type of credentials, without any type of qualifications. Mind you, both hosts of that show have been in nasty divorces. So you should know what this is. This is a nasty-ass man-hating show already. I'm just putting it out there. You should know what it is. Seriously, take them off NBC and put them on Lifetime as far as I'm concerned. And then you're going to go get Donnie Douche to represent me. Donnie Douche. You mean this Donnie, this Donnie Douche? Oh. So you got Donnie Deuce, the same guy who stole a hedge funder's wife to represent all men. You already fucking up, but you know what? I want to hear what you have to say about gaming since you have such a beef with it. So let's hear what you got to say. Elizabeth, what's up with men and video games? Do you think it's okay for men oh. to play video games in their 30s yeah, and no, over? No, that's weird. No. Xbox. The answer, no. I mean, maybe that's weird. Really, I think, you know, when you're 30s, <laughs> there should be something more on your mind, your attention to video games. I mean, that's it. You know, that's, But what about the guys who But if they're playing them with their kids, well, it's that's totally different. I don't fine. think that's okay. Yes. No, they're talking about you know, there's weird lots of life in video games. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is too easy. Let me get this straight, all right? You're saying that men over 30, if they're playing video games, they're weirdos in the basement. Well, it's funny because after this week, God bless you gaming women, you stepped up. I'm saying, gaming women in gaming stepped up and said, look, it's just it's not just men who play video games 30 and over. No, we play video games too. And we're gonna get into that right now, all right? Like I said, we're, just, we're gonna knock this out the box real quick. This is way too damn easy, seriously. Look, it says, according to the ESA, the average US gamer is 37 years old, all right? So there must be a lot of basements, I'm just saying. There must be a lot of basements. Now it says, meanwhile, it says, the most frequent game purchaser is 41 years old, 41 years old. Now, regardless if that's parents buying it for the kids or for themselves, it's a fact, 41 years old, all right? Now it says, even more exceptionally, 42% of all gamers are women are women so you know your man woman divide yeah that's thrown right out the window thrown right out the window it doesn't matter now all right it doesn't matter all right it says and females over the age of 18 represent a bigger segment of game playing population 37 percent right it says then boys age 17 or younger which is 13 percent yeah all right now this is why i love this. this is in addition kathy lee you know who's 57 years old her co-host who's 46 will surely be thrilled at 29 percent 29 percent of all americans all right 29 percent of all americans over the age of 50 of 50 play video games yeah of 50 play video games so there's still time for you ladies but i just want to say this right now we're gonna get this real quick all right all right, so if you want to consider them the elderly at 50, you want to consider them seniors or whatever, I guess they're I guess they're weirdos in the basement too, huh? See, what you fail to realize that you're saying anybody over 30 are weirdos in the basement, but if you're over 30 and you watch crap-ass TV like reality shows, that's okay. If you're over 30 and you participate like Kathy Lee in sweatshops, that's okay. If you participate, if you're 30 and you participate in running your mouth trying to cause a divide on NBC with no type of backing whatsoever, all right, then that's okay. That's what you're saying. Understand that gaming is a hobby. Understand that, all right? It doesn't matter how old you are. It keeps you forever young in your hearts, all right? My grandma still plays video games, all right? Plays Nintendo, plays, what was it? Bugs Bunny still plays it, all right? So don't sit here and tell me that, you know, it's a hobby. So many seniors, how many reports have we seen when they was playing the wait? I'm just saying, you have to understand that your opinion means nothing, all right? And I said this before, I'm not going to defend the industry anymore, but I will defend gamers. I will defend gamers. I'm not going to do all the backstabbing that's going on. I was like, I won't, all right? But understand this media. I just want to throw this out here, all right? This week, you're saying that video games, you know, are for kids or anyone under 30. That's what you're saying, for kids and anyone under 30. But just the last two weeks, we had the previous two weeks, we had to hear that video games are too violent for kids. So which one is it? All right, you have to make up your mind. Look, this is a joke, all right? You keep flip-flopping so bad. Look, make up your mind, get back to us, and then when you have a legit argument, then I'll counter with something that's, you know, that'll be worth my time because this, no matter how silly it is, I just wanted to make fun of you guys today. But you know what? 
I want to know what else you have to say on this topic before we go any further. What else do you have to say? I can't believe I'm, believe I'm agreeing with Donnie we've, on absolutely we've agreed on everything. everything. Donnie, this is thank you, Kumbaya, my lord. Thank you, Donnie. Okay. Thank you for coming to see. I'm just saying, you tried to make an argument. Game was over 30 or weird, but that's okay. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, anyways, you know, breaking out the Kumbaya is, is apparently okay. You know what? Let's move on to some gaming news, all right? All right, here's something serious, all right? EA buys PopCap. Now, if you don't know who they are, PopCap Games, uh, recently are known for Plants vs. Zombies, buys PopCap Games for 1.3 billion dollars. That's right, billion dollars. Billion dollars, now look, let's get something straight here, all right? Let's get something straight. Now, we had to hear how many times that the used game market was hurting EA, and that's why they came up with the online pass. This, no, all right? They're not hurting, I told you before, they're not hurting for money. Just saying, all right? This is takeover, all right? They want the online pass to keep going, and, and what they want to do is they want to sit here and buy other companies so that they can have a bigger market. See, this is this is a joke. This is a joke. You know, and like I said, any gamer who is still defending this, there's something fucking wrong with you. There is something fucking wrong with you. Ubisoft, that's right, Ubisoft announces their online pass, which is the Uplay Passport. So pretty much meet the new boss, same as the old boss. The difference is gamers will be fooled again and again and again if they still defend them. And this is gamer testimonials. They sit there saying, let's look at the history of things, of how we thought that games, you know, developers wouldn't do these type of things. So it says, it says, oh, DLC wouldn't be used like that. It says locking content on this won't become the normal, you know, the norm. It says uh, online passes will never catch on. As you can see, it's catching on. And the guy goes to say, Single player passes are going to be the next thing that won't happen apparently. And no, I am not joking. I fully believe in this next step. Any feeling of ownership that comes with having a physical copy of a game is being taken away one piece at a time. And we're just sitting around letting it happen. And he's absolutely right. And a lot of you guys are saying, well, where's the hackers to help us out? Remember, the hackers stopped hacking because too many fans were complaining, oh, they're ruining their fun. So this is on the gamers once again. Understand it now, look, I'll keep going. EA is cutting servers. That's right, so Battlefield, Need for Speed, and Tiger Woods are all getting shut down with servers. Now this this thing's two things, all right? First off, if you buy an online pass from EA, it goes to show you they can shut down a server at any time. So ten, the $10 project, any way you turn around and you buy it and then all of a sudden the, search, the server is cut, you're not getting that money back. You're done, and they've done this before with Mercenaries too. They've done it before, all right? So understand that. And secondly, this goes to show, this proves what I said before. In my DC Universe videos, I said before that they take servers and they roll them into other games. So they're never hurting. So all you guys saying that, you know, oh, we're paying for servers and this, that, and third. No, they've already had those servers. They take it from one game to another to another. I've been telling you this for how long? But you don't want to listen. And speaking of DCUO, oh, man, this is great. Guys, guys. DCUO has come out with the Lantern Rings, all right? The Green Lantern Rings. Now, mind you, this was supposed to come out before the Green Lantern movie. It was supposed to come out like a week or so before or on time with the movie. So they're late already. They're late, all right? They want you to pay $10 for Lantern Rings. Now, understand this. You're paying $10 for a power set that was supposed to be in the game in the beginning. For those who remember, they sat here and promised saying that this would have been in the game at launch. And they didn't have the time because they rushed it. So this is something that was supposed to be in the game in the beginning. And you're paying for it. Now also, we won't speak about paying for a minute. Because remember you guys, all you guys that came out and said, well, we're paying for DCUO because of monthly updates. They'll be free this and third. Well, this ain't free. This isn't free. And a lot of people who are playing, who are still playing DCUO, I've seen on forums are complaining about this because this was supposed to be free. And yet, they're milking you for money and they've opened up cash shops. Like I said, what happened, all right? So you're paying monthly fee. You're not getting all monthly content. And you know what? Let's get into all the stuff that they have brought out already, all right? So let's see. Throughout the, throughout the months, DCUO has come out with their monthly content. It's come out with two new raids, one new heart alert, three seasonal missions, two, challenge, uh, two new challenge missions, and appearance styles. That's it. That's it. That's all you got, all right? That doesn't sound like monthly content to me. I told you before, all right, that if they didn't take their time and make this, it was going to happen. You didn't want to listen. You didn't want, you know what? Sony, SOE. I hope that you have learned your lesson, especially with all these other games going free to play. I hope the fans have realized just how ridiculous they look. I'm just saying. Hopefully they have realized it. Now, I need to move on because we need to talk about some more Sony issues, all right? Sony is quietly, quietly, I say this, removing a feature from the PS3. That's right. And their new, and their new, uh, what's it, their new PS3 coming out, all right? Because some of you guys keep messaging me saying, should I get the old Slim? Should I get the Slim? Or should I wait for this new one? Listen, all right? 
This is the new K uh, chassis, uh, which Sony will begin shipping the retails this week. Will require customers to use to use an HDMI cable to play a game or watch a movie in high definition. According to the tipster, the component out, which on all other models supports high definition video models, will no longer do so. All right, this is according to the memo apparently sent around GameStop today, and I want you guys to pay attention to this. For those who've been in retail or work in retail and know how this goes in this business, understand this. It says, as GameStop puts it, offering the HDMI cables to customers picking up a PS3 will also help you drive add-on sales. Add-on sales, we all know about that. So when you buy something, you need another controller, you need some cords, you need, you know what I mean? Before PS2 days, you know, PS1 days, you need a memory card, you need this, you need that. Yeah, get ready. Get ready to be nickel and dime. So you have to understand they're taking away features. So it seems like all Sony does these days is take away features. I <laughs> mean, seriously. And it may be cost productive, possibly. But still, guys, you have to understand that this is where it's going. All right? Now, also, in more Sony news, they're tightening up on security. All right? Because apparently they're trying to tighten up against defense against pirates, hackers, and leaks. And they're targeting their own employees. Yes. Now, we said this before when it comes to leaks that in companies, when something's leaked, it has to come from the inside. They tried to blame hackers before saying, oh, no, they got into our system. No, it has to come from the company itself to leak in order for people to see things. All right. Don't be stupid. All right. Also, here's something that you guys have been saying about how any developers will save us, you know, from these big, you know, these big time developers. Well, Sony just gave 20 million to indie, uh, indie developers. That's right. All right. So it means that indie developers are now becoming the bigger corporations where they're being attached on to the bigger corporations. We just saw what they just EA just bought PopCap. Now Sony's giving 20 million to other indie, uh, indie devs. It's going to get nasty. So even indie developers at this point, they're like I said, they're they're not they're going to take they're going to take the money. All right. Speaking of developers, I want to talk about this real quick. Dirt three. Dirt 3, now I told you guys before that you weren't getting a complete game. I report before that they purposely said that they were going to give you half a game. Well, full details, they have come out. Dirt 3 is uh, announcing a title update launch. All right. It says full details improvements offered by the title updates are available on the official Dirt 3 forums or whatever. They want you to go to their forums to see what's going on. They need hits. <laughs> this is most of which are concerned with fixing rare crash issues. I really doubt they're rare because for all the complaints I've seen, happens all the time. It's not rare. All right. It says, and minor bug fixes. What I'm hearing is not minor either. All right. It says, of most interest in the 360, uh, what is it? And the 360 gamers will surely be the reset line corrections now altered to prevent potential issues such as driving onto the crowd and several on several tracks. So you can just drive into the crowd and not give a fuck. All right. It says PC gamers. That's right. You guys. It says we'll receive a similar uh, revision of reset lines along with an extensive list of further fi uh, fixes. It says including various stability issues. So apparently they rushed the game. They gave you half the game. They rushed the game and it's taking this long just to fix all the problems. That's what it's telling you, all right? I'm just saying. So, guys, you know what? Let's take a break real quick. I have a very special thing. You guys have been talking so much about King of Fighters and fighting games. And even, let's say, these previous two weeks on the fan page, you're still talking about King of Fighters. Well, I have something that's been a while. It may be old for some of you guys who know. But for some of you, I'm sure it'll be new and it'll sure it'll be exciting. King of Fighters World. And for those who don't know what I'm talking about, I got gameplay to show you guys from the action. That's right, action MMO that's coming out. Check this out.
game is a free-to-play MMO, which will sell it already. The story connects with the other King of Fighter games, so there's not just a, a separate story out of blue. Let me say this now, all right? The game is already out overseas, but so far there are no plans for localization. No plans, which I don't understand because as far as I'm concerned, this definitely should be coming over to the US. So SNK Playmore, if you're listening, if you have a problem with localizing this game on the Western Front, put it on the disc with King of Fighters 13. I'm telling you, look, we saw this with Metal Gear Solid 4, did we not? They had Metal Gear Solid, the, the, was it the game, the single player mode, and then the online part, right? We saw this. We saw this with Tekken. And I say this because the game, the gameplay almost reminds me of Tekken Force. Almost, all right? So you do it like Tekken, all right? You have the arcade mode, and then you have Tekken Force at the bottom. So you have to understand, this is how you minimize, I'll say this now, trading games. This is how you do it. Not use game sales, but trade-ins. Because the more options you give people the longer to hold on to the game. I'm just saying, this, this is how you do it. Not online passes, no. This is how you do it. All right, but people don't wanna listen. I'm just saying, SNK Play More, please. Think about it, just think about it. All right, now, in other news, Blood Rain Betrayal. Now, I showed you guys the, uh, was it the trailer for this about a month or so ago. It's about to hit, was it, it's going to hit the PSN in August 30th and Xbox Live on August 31st, all right? Also, a new Rainbow Six is coming out. A new Rainbow Six is coming out. We've been saying this for a while on Ubisoft. Where's our Rainbow Six? We've been saying this. You keep showing us Ghost Recon. We don't care about Ghost Recon. We want Rainbow Six. But now with this online pass thing, I don't know now, all right? However, Kotaku is saying this might be the most innovative shooter in years, meaning Battlefield 3, you out the, I'll say Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4 because they've already said that it's going to be a yearly installment. So when you buy Battlefield 3, it's already out of date. Just saying, all right? So Battlefield 3 and 4, you're already, you're already obsolete. Anyways, in PC news, I have some, some news for you guys who are looking forward to Star Wars The Old Republic. That's right now. 200 hours. 200 hours of gameplay for each class. That's a lot of gameplay. I'm just saying it's a lot of gameplay. It's going to keep you guys busy. Also, in Capcom news, yeah, I know, Capcom, we should just laugh at this point. Uh, a Power Stone collection may be coming out. Now, this is weird because Capcom is just, they're just, like I said, they're going to put blame on the side. And they're actually talking about other games, which makes no sense to me. Svensson, as we all know, that has to be the worst name. I mean, every time you hear that name, you're just going to hear a crowd of booze. But this is what he has to say on the issue. Now, understand this is written kind of weird, all right? It says, frankly, a lot of it that sits in Sony's hands SCEA's and SCEE's hands right now. It says, I can see it happening in Japan because SCEJ has committed to that range of products. It says, I continue to have conversation with SCEA on exactly this topic. I have no news, unfortunately. I can share on that front, but we, but we are pushing hard for that sort of thing to happen. It says, I think it opens the door for, uh, to Power Stone. It says it opens the door to Metal Gear. <laughs> it opens the door to Monster Hunter. It opens the door to a lot of things. But, unfortunately, there's no movement on that front right now. Just still pushing through. So, apparently, he's trying to get it done, but I wouldn't have used other games to try to put his point across. I'm just saying. What I tell you guys before, you don't try to push other games and say, well, they did it, or, you know, and then try to say, why can't we? You don't do that. You don't try to, you know grab other titles to try to make yours look better. You just don't do it or make yours justified in doing it. You just don't do that. All right, also, and more news. Now, a lot of guys have been telling me as of late about the crash mode being taken out of Burnout Paradise, all right? Now, they wanted me to speak on this, so I did some research. Um, apparently, the crash mode is being taken out. It says, it's kept out of Burnout Paradise because of a new downloadable game coming out. Yes, all right, so let's get into this real quick. It says, it's, um, Burnout, was it? Burnout is coming out with a, uh, an arcade type style downloadable game called Burnout Crash, all right? It says, the title suggests Crash Mode is the primary focus of the new downloadable game. Although Criterion has made another strange choice in giving Burnout Crash a top-down view, all right? So it's a top-down view, it says, and to the writer's, you know, opinion, and a goofy art style, all right? So if you wanna know why Crash Mode was taken out, this is the reason why. I'm just saying, I don't think it's right, but I'm sure people will give it a chance still. It is Burnout. I'm just saying. Now, I know a lot of gamers are probably complaining and saying, oh, what the hell are they doing? What the hell are developers doing? You know, I can make a better game than this. Well, if you think you can make a better game, I have a little treat for you guys. Because we have Tim Schafer to talk about how gamers can pitch their video games. Check this out. Uh, first of all, just thanks for uh, making the time to be here. I know you're really busy. I'm just, um, I'm really excited to be here and show you my pitch uh, for a game. 
which I hope, I mean, I think, I think you really like. Okay, so uh, here it goes. Um, what we want to do is take something really accessible, but make it a little edgy, give it a little tweak, you know? So we're talking about a storybook world full of zombies. Zombies, huh? <sighs> okay, me think we've seen that one before. Uh, yeah, but these aren't just any zombies. These are zombies that have um, problems, and uh, they're zombies with problems, and you have to help them with their problems. <sighs> it's like an interactive storybook um, full of zombies, but not just a regular storybook. It's like a um, living storybook world full of zombies, which I guess makes it kind of an undead uh... storybook world. Um, all those zombies like every chapter uh, in the book is about a different zombie and every zombie has a different problem like maybe one zombie has lost something uh, like his head <sighs> world and you interact with all the zombies and you help them solve their problems at least I'm um, I think uh, that's what zombies want is help with their problems so, what do you think? Well, well, uh, <clears throat> oh, well, me, no, no, Tim. Oh, you know, guys in marketing, they tell me zombies kind of 2007. Know what me mean? Um, did I say zombies? Once or twice. Yes, you did. No, no, zombies? No. What I meant to say was, um, monsters. Monsters. It's a storybook world full of monsters. Monsters with problems, and you have to help the monsters. We're even going to call it Once Upon a Monster. Storybook world full of monsters. You know, me like the sound of that. Me think you got future in video games, kid. Have a cookie. <laughs> How can you not like that? I mean, come on. Come on. Anyways, look. In more gaming news, it's just a movie news, all right? Legendary Pictures is working on a Mass Effect movie. That's right, so it's coming, all right? Also, in Limbo news, now look, all right? There's a lot of articles going around saying that Limbo's coming to the PSN, all right? And then there was articles from the de developers that said saying Limbo's not coming to the PSN. It's staying with Xbox exclusive, this, that, and the third. All right, look, Limbo is coming to the PSN, all right? On July 19th, just saying, all right? Now, you guys have been asking me about this for a couple weeks now. Dust... 514. Alright, you've been asking me for some news for this, and I said, you know, I'll look it up for you guys. Well, look, the developers of the game are demanding an upfront charge of $10. Alright? Yes. Alright, now I'll explain. What they're going to do is, they want you to pay $10 ahead of time. Alright? And then, once you pay your $10, they're going to take that $10 and put it in-game and give it back to you. So, they're saying, we're not seeing anything from this. That's bullshit, all right? It's almost like, it's almost like store credit, all right? And you know how people feel about store credit if they want to take their money elsewhere, all right? But understand, what they're doing is, you're paying them $10, they're giving it to you back in all, and was it in-game items? I mean, you'll pretty much have to pay for the in-game items. And then, guess what? You're still giving them the $10. Like, so, for them to say that you're not paying them, you are paying them. Anyway, you said you are paying them. It's bottom line, all right? It's stupid, but... It is what it is. If you guys are for it, by all means, do what you want. Also, more news. Madden gamers, get ready to be screwed again, all right? Madden 12, they've said already. All right, where's it at? They've said already. There will be no additions to online franchise mode in Madden 12. Now, they say that there's a, um, there's links in the info bar for you guys. They say that they're going to reveal a new online feature soon. We'll see what happens. You guys are used to being screwed every year. It's the same game anyway. They want to talk about new crash, uh, was it collision damage and all this other bullshit? Stop. It's a game. Seriously. I'll take the old Madden where, you know, the ambulance will come out and hit people. I'll take that Madden any day over this year. You're just making it too realistic. You're worried about graphics too much. 3D textured fucking grass. Just give us football. Just give us some football. You're making the games too easy now. And a lot of people saw that last year because the sales dropped because of it. All right, because it was too simplistic. It was just too easy. Seriously, you want to rush a game? If you don't have time to sit down and play a full game of Madden, then you don't need to be playing Madden. You don't need to be playing it. It's that simple. Anyways, you know what? I'm going to move on. We need to talk about something real quick. Now, guys, we had talked about this on the fan page not too long ago. And uh, I told you guys that I had got a chance to play Catherine. Now, I downloaded it on Tuesday, all right? And I didn't play it till Wednesday, but I played it from Wednesday throughout Thursday night. And I had to say that I, sat, I spent so much time 
with this game. This game is great, all right? I don't understand what the beef is with this game, but I'll explain, all right? I'm gonna go through all the ins and outs, all right? So first, let's talk, let's talk about puzzle, all right? It's a puzzle game, it's a puzzle platforming game, all right? Let's get it out of the way. It's a puzzle platform game. The story so far is pretty good. Understand this. You can change the story. So it will have multiple endings, all right? You can change the story depending on your statements or actions, all right? Now, gameplay, I'll say this now. Gameplay is good, all right? But there are some kind of control issues. Sometimes when I go right with Vincent, he'll go left or he'll go forward and, like, fall. It's annoying. It really is annoying. It, 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 I'm telling you, it can get frustrating at times when the character moves where he wants to move on his own. However, the game as just a complete overall experience is a great game. They did a great job with the atmosphere. The soundtrack so far is good for what I hear. I mean, you know, for the demo. Now look, I've seen a lot of gamers complain about this, all right? Because they're like, I can't get past the second board. This is bullshit. I don't know what I'm doing. So I'll give you a hint, all right? Use your creator box, but don't use it till you get almost to the top. All right, that's the only hint I'm giving you. All right, that's how you do it. All right, I told you I spent so much time with this game. I tried every variation you could on the second board, which is was it Prison to Despair? I sat there and tried to complete the puzzle without using the creative box. But they want you to use the creative box because it's a new item, so they're going to use it as a tutorial. All right, I spent way over. I'm seriously the first time I played, I spent like two hours on it. Just figuring out how things work, and if you can do, understand this, understand this, because a lot of people are saying there's a method to this game. No, understand this is a game about trial and error, all right? Understand that. Once you know a board, you're pretty much good. You know what box to pull or whatever, or whatever, so that it makes other things fall or other things move. That's how this works, all right? A lot of people are saying, oh, the gameplay is too simplistic. This, that, no. No, I'm not trying to hear it, all right? I mean, seriously, Cubert was simplistic, and, and that was challenging. Pitfall at one time was simplistic, and it was still challenging. You get what I'm saying? There's no way you can sit here and say something is simplistic so that it's all of a sudden easy. And if you think the game is too easy, understand, idiot, that the game, the demo itself, is only set on easy. You can't set it on any higher difficulty because it's a demo. It's a demo. I... Seriously, guys, I, I, I don't understand. Seriously, you have to understand this. The game... I feel is great. IGN, I had said, you guys asked me what I felt about the demo itself. I said it's either an 8 or 8.5, which most gamers gave it. Now, IGN gave it a 9.0. So you should know the backlash that came with it. Now, this is what I don't understand, all right? As you guys are saying that, you know, IGN gives all these high scores and that, you know, but when Call of Duty came out, it was, oh, it's just another shooter, you gave it a high score, you should give games that are unique higher scores. Then when they give a game unique that's unique a higher score, you bitch and moan about it. I don't get it. What 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 is it that's gonna make you happy? I don't understand. All right, the game is good. All right, there's a for what I'm seeing at the end after you beat the demo, they're showing mini games that you can play during in game. Like this, I think this is gonna be a great game. All right, and I'm happy because I predicted. Did I not predict this a couple months ago on my show last year? All right, I said that the top three games that will probably go, you know, just fly over to, uh, was under the radar that will probably be good will be Catherine. I said a, a Sword's Wrath, and I said El Shaddai. All right, those are my three games. Right now, I'm one for three. All right, this game is great. Like I said, and I don't want. I'm not going to give the story away. All right, especially on the second board because the second board, I'm telling you now, it, it's real clear who's chasing you at least on the second board. All right, I see a lot of gamers complaining about how oh, there's a blackout segment where he's talking. You know, he's he, you're answering your cell phone and then Catherine comes over and all of a sudden you black out and then you wake up the next morning. It's like you have to understand that they're not going to show you everything. What do you want to see? Full on sex? Is that what you expect? You're not going to get that. You're just not going to get it. I mean, Heavy Rain almost did it, but you're not going to get that. I mean, seriously, you have to understand that this is a puzzle game, all right, with a great story, it seems, right now that's intact. So I'm definitely interested in the story. You guys asked me, what am I going to do first? I had said to you guys, I'll probably stay faithful to Catherine with the K and then try the other story with Catherine with the C. I, I don't, we'll see, all right? Because from what I'm hearing, the story can go so many different ways, all right? This game is great. And I don't understand what be, what else do you want? All right, this is something, it's a fresh breath from all the other shooters and all the other action adventure games. This is something different. It's something different, all right? And it's challenging. I, I find it's the best demo I've played in a long time. Really, I'm just saying. Anyways, guys, Catherine, if you get a chance, play the demo, please. Play the demo. Understand how the game works. Just don't go running around, because I'm telling you now, once you get to Prison Despair, things do, I, I won't say they get hectic, but they get distracting because that's what it's about. It's I play the game better when I work under pressure. So when I was playing Prison Despair, I was moving constantly and doing this. It, it, you really have to think ahead of time, all right? And you, and especially said, once you do a lot of trial and error and you understand the board, all right, 
you'll understand how fast you can move and how things work. It's really that simple. The game is great. I can't wait. Like I said, and a lot of people were saying, well, after the demo, I didn't feel like I wanted to play it anymore. Well, that's funny because after the demo, I wanted to play more, but there were no more boards. So I kept playing the same demo over and over and over. All right. That's, that's how it was for me. It was, it was a great experience for me as far as I'm concerned. All right. Anyways, guys. Also, yeah, a lot of people are complaining about Vincent's character, the character design, him being in his little boxer shorts or whatever. Trust me, when you're playing the game and you're under pressure and you're moving constantly, you're not going to be worried about that fucking character. You're not even going to be worried about what he looks like because you're too busy trying to save your own ass. Anyways, I'll talk to y'all later because that's the end of the show. I'll talk to y'all later. Y'all be safe. Y'all have a good weekend because I start my weekend on Thursday night. I don't know about y'all. I'm out. A little click if it leads to is